If your physician gave you a prescription that would improve your memory, improve your depression, decrease, decrease your risk of Parkinson's disease or Alzheimer's disease, would you take it? If I told you that this treatment isn't a designer drug, a special diet, an implantable device, a supplement or a vitamin, are you still interested? The most amazing thing about this treatment is that it's simply exercise. Good old fashioned breaking a sweat or pumping iron. Are you still interested? The human brain is made up of 80 billion neurons with 100 trillion connections. Disruptions in any of these connections can cause brain diseases like Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, or depression. I'm a neurobiologist a scientist who studies cells of the nervous system and how these cells work together to produce behavior, specifically body movement. In my free time, I race bikes. I love to move my body and go really, really fast. As a competitive cyclist, I spend countless hours focusing on my body movement and specifically my pedaling cadence, or revolutions per minute. I'm going to show you that the key to helping the brain repair and rewire itself may very well be that cadence that I strive so hard to achieve. Scientists used to believe that no new neurons were produced after brain development was complete in childhood. They thought that your brain is essentially unchanged after your 18th birthday. However, we now know that the brain has an amazing capacity to repair and rewire itself beyond childhood and into adulthood. Now the key to helping the brain repair itself is to find the right treatment. So how can this self-healing be turned on? In people who've had a stroke, we know that early rehabilitation therapy can promote reorganization of the brain and restoration of function. However, in other brain diseases like Parkinson's disease, standard physical therapy doesn't really help these people have improved movement. In fact, we showed that simply getting on an exercise bike doesn't really help Parkinson's disease people move better. Now, in my research lab, I found that high cadence cycling can improve movement in people with Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's is a progressive neurological disorder. The brains of these people stop producing an important chemical called dopamine. Now, dopamine helps neurons of the brain talk to each other, specifically to produce movement. The idea behind my research is that the brain is essentially able to change and rewire so that the symptoms of Parkinson's are better. However, those symptoms make it challenging for people to move fast. So I thought, I can pedal really fast. And if I get on a tandem bike with people with Parkinson's, then I can help them pedal really fast. Now, our first studies used a tandem bike to help people with Parkinson's pedal at a fast cadence. The trainer, me, was responsible for driving that cadence. Now, as a neurobiologist and a cyclist, I was thrilled at the prospects of being able to ride a bike for work, and specifically to help people. It was exciting that I got to do that, and what we saw was that the high cadence was more challenging than I ever imagined. None of these people were cyclists, and although they worked very hard, I ended up doing about 75% of the work. Now, this was a little more than I bargained for. In addition, it wasn't something that a friend or a family member could do very easily because of the high cadence. However, we did find the individuals who completed tandem cycling could improve their motor performance by about 35% over an eight-week period. We also showed, using functional magnetic resonance imaging, that blood flow was increased in areas of the brain that were important in producing movement. So this forced cycling was very effective in improving Parkinson's symptoms, but it wasn't really practical in a real-world setting because of the challenging cadence. Now, in order to overcome this challenge, I next developed a motorized exercise bike, which would help people with Parkinson's pedal faster. The trainer, the human trainer, was uh, basically substituted with a computer and a controller. 
This allowed me to test my theory without any spending all my time as a sweaty mess in spandex shorts. Let me illustrate this theory by telling a story. Mr. S. was a 69-year-old who had had Parkinson's for 10 years before he volunteered for our study. Over that 10-year period, his strength, his balance, and his walking had suffered so that he was actually confined to a wheelchair. I put him on the high cadence bike, and at the end of that tandem cycling intervention, he was actually able to pull himself up using a handrail of a staircase and to actually walk down those three stairs on his own two feet. His wife, who was actually with him at the time, was, was very surprised. And I remember her saying to me, he used the stairs. He hasn't used the stairs in three years. Now, the reduced tremor and the increased speed of movement that we see after this high cadence cycling is dramatic. And we have many examples like this. However, the solution isn't that simple. Tremor, slow movement, gait and balance issues that are characteristic of Parkinson's disease not all individuals have these symptoms. In addition, the disease is progressive, which means symptoms get worse with time. So any treatments need to be individualized and also adaptive. So the next set of studies that we did were that we used um, computer modeling and engineering to actually optimize the exercise for each individual. So just like a treadmill can change elevation and speed, my smart bikes can change resistance and cadence in order to optimize the brain changes in people with Parkinson's. So now we know that our brains can heal in adulthood, and we also know that high cadence cycling can motivate neurons to repair or reroute around injured areas. Think of all the debilitating neurological disorders that could potentially be improved if we can find just the right type of exercise. My research shows the importance of high cadence cycling and improving Parkinson's symptoms, and I hope that my smart bikes will be a practical solution through further research. Now, these findings also suggest that personalized exercise medicine could help people with other neurological conditions like multiple sclerosis or also Alzheimer's. So you may not like to exercise because it makes you tired, it makes you sweaty, it makes you sore. But there are a lot of data that suggests that exercise is indeed medicine for the brain. So I encourage you to take that prescription and get moving. Your brain will thank you, and I thank you.